Today, we have a hopefully short video. What's up guys? Today we're having a little look at this patch I've been working on that is for dealing with multiple matrices and mixing them together. So this uses the matrix objects. There's no no extras, no GL in here. And what we're doing is we're using the we're using the destination dimensions to allow us to control these two different matrix, i.e. videos within a third bigger matrix. And to give you a little example, there we go. So I have two videos playing in a 500 by 500 matrix that I am able to control by manipulating this dimension. And I can move it up, I can move it down. And the same with the second video, I can move it left and right, and I can move it up and down. Now this video is flashing when I move it sometimes because this matrix isn't plugged directly into the third floating matrix, it's simply just appearing uh, in a matrix called combined which has both of these and only this video here is plugged straight into the final display matrix so it has every time it generates a frame it outputs a frame there's probably a way to solve it with a unique tag a bit better but i didn't look into it i was just i'm using multiple matrix together to try and solve a problem and this is the start of how i was going to do it that is not for this video so let's get that out of the way Let's get that out of the way. And I should have a new window here. So to start off, I'm just going to simply make our metro, give it a nice 30. And then I'm going to have my toggle going into that. So we have our message banging. I am going to need two jit.qt.movies. I'm going to give them both relatively small resolutions here because this is just for a demonstration. I'm going to turn off the volume. I am going to turn on auto start and I'm going to give it a unique one. So every time, oh, movie, not movies. So every time that this frame or this movie draws a frame, it then makes sure it, it, it updates in the matrix it's being placed into. We plug that in there, move it down a bit. Done. Not really. So I am going to load, mess, read pball.mov into this. So what that should do is it should reference the max 7 folder and load basketball for us every time that we press this. So I load that. I'm also going to start pass it a start and a stop message. I'm going to put that up here next to our toggle. So this is all fairly basic stuff. I'm going to create a matrix that is for a car. Plug that in there. Jit.p window at I'm going to make a 250 by 250. Uh, patch a window here because it's a lot easier to visualize when I am using part of my screen to record on than it is to use the entire thing. So there we go. We have a 250 by 250. So I'm just going to use the attributes to confirm some dimensions here. So I can see here I've got my uh, 160 by 220 going into a 250 by 250 and if we change the dimensions of this it'll start to affect our video because it's automatically upscaling for us in the matrix in the matrix Ooh. to give you the general idea of how we do this I am going to take this matrix here and then subset it inside a much bigger window and to do that we need to set destination dimensions. And thankfully, that is already built in. 
we can do something called use and you'll see here that you can use ds dim which is destination dimension flags if we select that and put one we can then start telling our matrix what its destination dimension is going to be e.g. we can set it almost x and y coordinates within a future space in a future whoa. so I'm going to do ds uh, t dim start I'm going to give it a 10 10 and I'm going to use ds t dim end and I'm going to give it something like how big did we make it 160 so I'm going to do 170 by 130 so what does that actually mean ignore this for now what does that actually mean that means that our movie is 160 by 120 being put into this matrix here and then we're going to use this information to create this ma this matrix doesn't really exist at the moment we're going to use the information here to force it to exist in a third matrix which is going to be our output window so after setting our dimension end we need to reevaluate. We need to tell JIT.matrix how big it actually is again because we've removed that. So I'm going to give this a name. We're going to call it JIT.matrix combined one. And this is going to become the just a reference into a much larger data node of the matrix. I'm going to create a second JIT.matrix. Combined one. This one's going to be much sim much more like the original and have uh, our size. And the reason we do this, uh, we can pass the matrix named matrix commands as long as the name is valid. Valued. Valid. So basically, as long as we pass our named matrix a command, no matter where in the patch, it will update. So when we add this movie here with a unique tag into the named matrix here with this dimensions uh, end point or destination end point, we can set a matrix down. We can tell combined one that it's actually 250 by 250 and it will exist with a 250 square that has our little image up here that is starts 10 in, 10 down and stretches to 170 and 130 across. So to validate that, we I'll get it, it's, it's late guys, I'm sorry. There we go, it's looking better. Gotta bring that down here. Plug that into there. And voila! You can see that now combined one exists as this entire space here. And jet.qt.movie 160 by 120 exists in the top left hand corner. And now that is the basics of it done there. If you want to challenge yourself, I'd pause the video and see if you can create a second video player that reference something in say this bottom quadrant here. Like exactly like we're about to do. And to do that, I'm going to pull this up a bit. And I'm going to create an exact copy of all this stuff. But I'm going to delete the second window because we don't need that. Because everything's going into j.matrix.combined. I'm going to change the video to, let's see, Red Ball, my favorite. I'm going to load bang that to make sure it exists. I'm going to change the dimensions of this one. Actually, no. Let's do it something. Let's do it differently. So let's do it right from the far left hand side. So let's see. It starts at two forty, two forty. So right down in this bottom corner, two forty take away one sixty is eighty. Yes, and 120 take away 160 is 20. No, it's 120, Michael. 
So now, when we reference this video, it should appear in sort of from the center point down here, and we'll have our other one up there. But you'll notice, because we banged this Jet movie into Matrix Combined 1, it's having a really bad time about it. But remember, we can pass the named matrix commands as long as we, we have a valid name. So we can pass it a message that is uh, dim5, it's not dim, dim500 by uh, dim250 by 250, just like we did here. But this time we bang it every time that our video gets updated. And there we go, we can see it's back to normal again. Let's pass our start and stop commands, as well as our metro. And voila, you will see that our B ball and our red ball both exist inside the same JIT.matrix combined one. And all this black space is, uh, well, it's just sort of invalid space. So now we have both our matrix inside the same JIT matrix here. Uh, what now? Well, we want to be able to move these objects. So to do that, we're going to need to control the destination start and end points. Destination dim. Destination dim start. So if we pack two numbers together, pass it into our movie player, or top matrix. So we've packed that together, plugged it in, and now if we start changing it, you'll see that it gets a bit wacky and you can play with the size a bit. What you'll also notice is that it, because we are running, running essentially two matrix within the one and leaving all this as blank space, we need to tell Matrix to clear itself every single time. But luckily, we have a way of communicating with the combined Matrix without having to interfere with these two. So we can add a simple clear message, plug it in, press it, and you'll see it gets rid of all the rubbish. Because we have unique tags, these videos will redraw themselves every time they create a new frame. So every time that we bang this, all we need to do Spying this. So now we can edit the size of our shape or move our matrix without having to worry. There we go. Do the exact same thing with end. I'll just plug it into the same bang message. It helps if you plug it into the combined matrix. There we go. So now you can see I have control over my matrix within the space. Uh, I'll come back to this in a minute on how you can advance a bit further, but you don't need to know more about that. All you need to know is you can plug this into both of the matrix and it will still work perfectly fine. And you can do this for as many matrix as you want. So there you go, we can really, really mess with things here. Obviously this is a fairly small matrix, so there's limited space for us, but if you are feeling brave, you can play with a 1080, 4K matrix. You can see you can invert the movies and everything using this way. Uh, so that is how you combine matrix using just simple tools without any heavy mathematics. And if we look at the original patch I showed you, you can see, uh, you can see instead of just prepending the dim straight, uh, the dimension straight in, I, I added a little math so that it was always at its input resolution. So every time a movie is loaded, it gets the dimensions of that and then sends those dimensions to both the uh, original combined matrix and it adds that value to whatever the x I'm adding so this one is 160 so it'll be 
140 plus 160 so it's always at a constant resolution or six next to 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 and then every time that that gets done you can see it sends a metro that bangs into the combined so that it's always at the right size for me and that is just a quick look at how to combine multiple matrices in a single matrix in max you got that good